Hey guys, it's John with Bleepin' Jeep. Here today I'm going to do a install of JCR's mid-frame stiffeners on my XJ. This is a piece of 3 16 inch plate that is formed to the shape of the frame. It goes between the lower control arm mount on the front and the front of the leaf spring mount in the rear. It's all punched out and formed to the holes and contours of the frame underneath there. So it's a nice tight fit to your frame. It's also got a couple relief areas where it will bend as you install it to match the contour of the frame even better. It requires welding. For welding to the XJ frame, it can get a little bit daunting just with getting your settings right, possibly blowing a hole in the frame with the welder as you go, which of course you can patch up as you go but you do need to be careful that you don't overheat the area that you're welding by having your settings too hot or your wire speed too high. So we're gonna play around with that and I'll try to share my settings. We'll also talk about the frame prep and prep for the bare metal of these before installing. And then a process that I'm gonna do at the very end once that's done to coat the inside of the frame. So let's get started. But first, go ahead and like this video and if you could, subscribe to the channel. That way you get great updates on my XJ project as well as all the other great stuff going on with Bleepin' Jeep. So one of the first things that you need to do before you can install your frame stiffeners is to drop the cross member that holds your transmission up. You don't have to remove it completely. You'll just want to lower the transmission a little bit by unbolting it from the frame rail here. Just enough that you could slide this in here easily and bolt this back in. So it wouldn't need to be dropped significantly. It's up to you if you want to take that whole cross member off. But once that's out of the way, you can bolt your stiffener in place using just those bolts from the that held the cross member on. And then you'll want to get a floor jack and press up on it in a few other places to start conforming this to the frame rail. And if you're following along on my XJ build, you know that I already have a lot of this stuff out of the way. So this is a perfect time for me to do this. There's basically three sections to this, the back, and then there's a relief, a small middle section, another relief, and then the front. So what I need to, to do is to start jacking up on these and also clamping them into place so that they're held flat to the bottom but also flat to the side. And you do need to be careful on the driver's side, there are fuel lines and brake lines. You can see I went over top of the fuel and brake lines there. Now the instructions that JCR provides don't say to weld on this side of it, they only say to weld on the outside basically but I think this is gonna be a nice enough edge to do a bead and I'm not gonna go the whole length of it or anything on these shorter sections I will so I'm just gonna mark this as an area that I want to clean off and I'll do probably a couple like two inch beads inch and a half or so two inch beads along here and the front section also has another relief there where you can bend this so smack that with a mallet and bend it around one step that i'm taking with mine which is optional is to clean down the inside of these frame stiffeners the part that's touching the xj frame and i'm going to paint this with stainless steel paint which is weldable means it's not going to catch on fire when you weld it and it allows the uh, the welder to, to make contact through the paint. So uh, I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to etch it with a Eastwood fast etch 
and then I'm going to paint them with uh, probably two coats of the stainless steel paint just on the inside for now. And I'm not really going to try to hit the edges that are going to be accessible later. Just everything that's going to be covered. I'll do the same thing on the Jeep frame after that's been prepared as well. Definitely want to wear rubber gloves and safety glasses when working with an acid-based product like this. Okay. Don't need to be getting that all over my clamps here. You need to let that sit for about 30 minutes, making sure that it stays wet. So I'll check back on that in about 10 minutes. In about 10 minutes and everything looks still uniformly wet. So I'll let that go another 15 minutes or so. Here's what this looks like after the etching process is done. Well, that went way easier than I anticipated. And that was using a brand new 40 grit uh, flap disc. I'm not gonna worry about the bottom. There's none of that kind of coating on the bottom of the frame. I'm not welding anything to the bottom, so I'm not concerned there. Uh, I will go ahead and do a little bit uh, along sort of the the opposite side of this. So we got vertical and a 45, horizontal, another 45 on the other side. So I'm going to touch that where I made some marks to be able to have a good clean weld surface. All right, so using the metal prep. Now this is basically methyl ethyl ketone in a can. You could use it out of a jug and pour it onto the cloth too, but it's kind of convenient from a can like this. And you just want to wipe, spray that and wipe it before it dries. Stuff evaporates super quick. At this point now, I'm going to go ahead and do a test fit of the stiffener to make sure that I've cleaned all the areas I need to and that it sits nice and tight and that the undercoating isn't causing any fitment issues anywhere. If that looks good. I'll go ahead and paint it. And then once the paint's dry, I'm ready to start tacking it in place. All right, that's looking really good. So let me go ahead and pull this back off. Paint.
Well, I'm back at this. I took a, a day off from working on it, from even looking at it, because I was getting frustrated getting everything lined up the way it should be. And the main reason for that ended up being that I just wasn't jacking in the correct places. I got a second jack. Unfortunately, I don't have another hydraulic floor jack right now, so this uh, car jack from the Volkswagen had to suffice. And jacking up on the back section and the front section, leaving this little middle section without a jack on it, because that's the only angled part, was the ticket. I also ran out and got some welding clamps, these F-style clamps, and that makes a world of difference as well, just in the amount of surface area that you're able to apply that force to that you can't really with a C-clamp in this scenario. So that was uh, the two things that I was kind of missing, and now I've got it nice and tight. I also went through after getting uh, everything pretty much exactly where it needed to be and just smacking the areas that I need to weld. And I'm gonna start at the, the middle here and kind of work my way out and I'll move my clamps as I do that. And I'll show you that process. Uh, but I wanna make sure that this is nice and tight to the frame because any gap in there is just gonna require excess bead on the weld, which is gonna create excess heat, which is gonna blow through the frame. Looking at the suggested settings table here, I'm using steel, solid wire, not flux core. And I'm 035 wire, bring that across to 3 uh, I want to be on 24 volts, 305 inches per minute for the wire speed. So at the dials here, this is the MiG-250. I'm at 24, 305. But I'm going to back that down kind of between 22, 24, and a little off of 305 there. So maybe 23, 290, something like that. That's where I'm going to start out. If that's too hot, I'll dial it back. If it seems too cold and I'm not endangering blowing through, then I'll turn it up a little. Okay, those are all tacked. I do want to tack the very back piece in here. So I'm going to move my jack and my clamp one more time.
now that everything is tacked in place, I need to go back through all of these tack areas and weld the bottom of these circles. And I need to go across the tops of these valleys as well. These are definitely holding strong enough, so I'm gonna do this kind of back to front since that's where I'm set up right now. And I'll start here, come down to this one, and work my way back, but I do want to let things cool as well. So I'm going to uh, probably do half this, then this, then the other half, and then jump to this one. So my setting now is about 260 on the wire speed and 23 on the bolts. And that is working really well up top here. Uh, the original settings I shared for the 3 16th just dialed down a half a notch. Uh, worked really well on the plug weld, the round hole still. So I'm liking that. but. Uh, Sticking with a lower setting up top here is working well. The only tip I would have for your form is just to spend more time on the stiffener material than on the, the Jeep subframe. So uh, you kind of want to be like two thirds of your time heating up this metal and one third of your time heating up the Jeep side uh, as you kind of move that puddle. So uh, it is easy to burn through but it's not incredibly frustrating. It doesn't burn through that quick. Wrapping up your frame stiffeners, up to you, but I'm gonna go across some of these welds with the grinder and a flap disc to clean up some of these welds just a little bit, some of the spatter, and then I'll hit these with some paint. I'm also gonna power wash the inside as well as I can, it's gonna be hard. And then a couple days later, I'm gonna use Eastwood internal frame coating to uh, make sure that I try to cover up any burned off paint. There's the last step of the frame stiffener installation. I'm gonna spray the inside of the frame rails that we've just welded to with this Eastwood internal frame coating. So let's uh, take a look inside of this package here at what this comes with. We got a spray nozzle and of course our can of paint. A spray nozzle here. Looks like it's about a foot long. 
maybe even more, like 16 inches long or so. And it's got a little brass tip to it, which I don't know if you're going to be able to see on the camera here. But that has a bunch of little orifices in that, so it's going to spray in a bunch of different directions. So I can hold this at some of the frame openings and kind of flex this around, aim it around, so that it covers the inside of the frame rails nicely with the paint. Push the hose in as far as you can through whatever hole you're accessing it from. And then as you spray, pull the hose back towards you. So that seems to make the most sense. I've got a hole here and a hole way up here. And uh, we get this hole back here and then a little bit further back. And then we didn't weld beyond that. So kind of up to you if you want to go beyond what you've welded as an extra precaution. obviously a few spots there it's gonna drip out so uh, we'll need to just try and catch on those drips just a couple quick tips the welding settings that I mentioned at the beginning worked out really well I did dial it back just a little bit for a couple softer areas that seemed to want to burn through and uh, that seemed to be more on the long side welds not the plug welds so uh, that definitely worked out pretty well uh, keep some water in a spray bottle handy to extinguish any little fires that you might have. Um, I did had to do this alone, so I didn't have anybody on fire watch, but if you have somebody on that, that'd be very helpful as well. Listen for any burning paint. Uh, you know, you can definitely smell that as well. If you have any kind of respirator, good idea to wear that while you're welding this stuff. Have a little bit of a breeze flowing too. And uh, yeah, I really didn't have any issues with burning through other than a couple little spots and the, uh, you know, the the trick was just to kind of take it slow. I did have to pull the, the stiffeners down a few times, trim a few things off, and uh, kind of work around the design of that. You know, it's a more universal design. Every Jeep's gonna be just a little bit different. So, uh, you know, you may need to, to do some adjustments and, um, you know, don't get upset about it. Just make, uh, make the adjustments you need to on the pieces uh, with a grinder, cutoff wheel, whatever you need. Uh, mostly mine was on the, the portions that were closest to the floor. So uh, yeah, just keep, uh, keep that in mind. The paint that I used worked pretty well. Didn't have any of that catching on fire and I'm pretty confident that uh, I've rust proofed it as well as I can for the future. So uh, you know, I will end up coating this all internally on the frame and uh, with some chassis saver paint all over the outside of the frame eventually. Uh, another tip too, the exhaust on mine was out, which I realized on the passenger side made a huge difference for clearance. If I'd had the exhaust tubing in there at the time, it would have been pretty difficult to get the clamps on there. And on the driver's side, you've got the fuel line, so be mindful of that. Uh, be very, very careful. And uh, it did help to take the wheels off just to get some more light in there so that you're not struggling with visibility so much, uh, especially on the front where you have the little wraparound piece uh, take the front tire off. If you're jacking up the vehicle though, do be mindful that you're not twisting the frame. You wouldn't want to have this all twisted up and uh, put the put the frame stiffener on in a way that would uh, you know, have your frame be at all tweaked, your body tweaked.